members of parliament are also weighing in on the security situation and asking the president to come face lawmakers on his plans as well as strategies. The House resolved that the president should end the speech address the inability of his administration to declare the bandits terrorists and stop the systematic attacks despite several motions and resolutions by both chambers of the National Assembly. It's the last plenary session of the week in the House of Representatives and lawmakers are gathered to consider key legislative issues. Displacing residents and occupying affected communities. This lawmaker has raised a matter of urgent public importance. The House is disturbed by the resurgence of attacks by killer headsmen and alleged bandits in communities in Benue, Kaduna, Zamfara and other states of the Federation from January 2019 till date, which has resulted in the loss of thousands of innocent lives and the displacement of thousands of Nigerians who have fled their homes. During the debate, another lawmaker highlights the need for a clear solution to the problem. Today is in Zamfara, tomorrow in Castina, another day in Benue. Taraba, all over the country, Ondo, Enugu, even in Anambra states. For us as a nation, we must work on how to protect lives and property. The lawmakers lament that the attacks appear to continue despite the numerous motions and resolutions from the House of Representatives and the Senate. What are the prayers of this motion? The House resolves to request that the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces address the nation within 48 hours on the following. The inability of the Armed Forces under his watch to stop the recurring death of scores of innocent Nigerians annually. The motion states that if the President fails to address the nation, it will be taken that his administration is incapable of addressing the issue and that it has failed in its primary constitutional duty of ensuring the security and welfare of Nigerians. The motion is adopted and passed. An ad hoc committee is also to be set up to hold a public hearing to find permanent solutions to the killings and attacks on Nigerians. Lanre Lassisi, Channels Television News. Let's now hear from security experts on what needs to be done to end the security issues. Joining us, uh, first in our LEGO studio, Major General Sisil Sekagbe, a security expert. Many thanks for joining us on the program. We'd also like to welcome uh, via Skype uh, in Abuja, Colonel Nye Mawachuku, the defense spokesperson. Uh, glad you could join us at this time. So let's start with um, you in Lagos. I mean, um, it's not the first time we've heard the efforts of the government to try and end, um, you know, the security situation, to try and mitigate whatever is happening. But we keep hearing it and people are not satisfied. What do you think of um, the marching orders, the strategy uh, of our leaders on security? Security and their challenges are a dynamic uh, phenomenon. So when the security calculations are changing, strategies are also changing. So I'm not surprised when uh, the president comes to the service chiefs to tell them to revise their strategies towards, uh, you know, total elimination of the menace. Now, the House, for example, has said 48 hours. If he cannot respond, then it means that if he's failed in his constitutional responsibility. What do you think? I think that is... Uh, at this time of blame game and the uh, issue of ultimatum uh, will not uh, help the issues. Uh, there are various levels of uh, interface between the legislature and the executive. So they should better exploit that rather than coming to the screen to give ultimatums. We're going to come back to our guest. So if we, we do have our guest via Skype, uh, Colonel Nwachuku. Um, I mean, do you think that it's about time maybe that the federal government changed the strategies and that all the strategies that has been employed isn't actually working. Well, thank you so much. I'd like to first and foremost uh, describe the unfortunate incidents in Zamfara as a period is happening and um, very condemnable. And of course, uh, the leadership of the armed forces of Nigeria are not resting on their oars uh, in ensuring that um, the normalcy is restored in that uh, part of the country. 
But I would like to uh, draw our attention to one very important uh, issue, uh, that um, we need to understand the fact that uh, there is a global trend. There is a shift in paradigm from what used to be the security challenges in those days, that's talking about um, uh, interstate warfare, to what we now call intrastate warfare. And Nigeria is not left out in this situation, where non-state actors are beginning to take up the instrument of violence against the state, against uh, the citizen citizenry, and of course, to push their, their agenda or their, their grievances. But Colonel Wachiku, why, why aren't our security operatives up to that task, up to this new dimension, as you call it? Yes, we need to understand the fact that these are developing issues. And uh, just like the earlier speaker has uh, mentioned, uh, General Estekaiga mentioned, there is need for re-evaluation, re uh, re And that's exactly what the leadership of the armed forces of Nigeria under the watchful eyes of uh, General uh, Aloni Shaki is doing, re I You will recall that, um, just like you mentioned, the March order was given. Uh, and. Um, in, in the space of a few hours, uh, the, the leadership of the armed forces and other security agencies have met and um, they have re-evaluated re the, the situation in Zampara. They have identified some lacunas or gaps, if you like, and uh, I think those uh, gaps are going to be going to be uh, addressed in the next line of action that they are going to take to uh, okay. address the security situation in Zampara, please. Before I come to our guest in the studio, I want to quickly ask you on the uh, numbers given by UNICEF and the issue raised on child abductors in Nigeria. Um, what more can you tell us? I mean, what's your reaction to that? Alarming numbers coming from UNICEF there. Um, I'm not aware of um, the sources of the statistics being uh, uh, touted by, by UNICEF, uh, so I wouldn't be able to really address that uh, issue. Okay, well, come. I want to mention. Just, just before you do, we need to um, bring in our correspondent who's covering the rallies of the Bring Back um, Our Girls um, in Lagos, Kevin Obete. Kevin. the fifth anniversary of the adoption of the Chibok. Right. We're right here at the Palmer runabout here in Victoria Island, and we're early informed that there's going to be a, a peaceful march or protest here um, to commemorate the fifth anniversary of the abduction of 276 Chibok girls and others that were also uh, abducted, especially uh, Leah Shiabu last um, year. Uh, we've been here for more than one hour. We are yet to see the uh, protesters who were, were informed that we gather here and hold a peaceful uh, protest. Um, there are chairs already arranged here. We are hoping to see them come around and also talk to anniversary, what it means to them, and if there are any new demand for the release of these uh, Chibo girls. You can also see uh, a big board beside me which represents the true story, the picture of the state of the remaining um, girls. Out of 276 of them that were abducted on the 14th of April in 2014, we are still hoping that 112 of them that are still missing, that are still in the captivity of the insurgents, will be released. Um, the Bring Back Our Girls global campaign has remained a strong advocacy point, has remained All right, Kevin Abitton there uh, for us in Lagos. Uh, lunchtime politics continues shortly. Stay with us.